You and I have what it takes to make it in this life. That's what we've been discussing in these episodes, in this series, which is coming to one close tomorrow. Today is the penultimate episode where we're talking about this. We're giving reasons as to why I think that you and I have what it takes. When I talk about you and I, I am talking to you who feels that you don't. You feel maybe you've been sick or you have this, you're carrying this kind of disease that is eating you up and, and, and so on. There's a stigma around you, or the stigma around it. You feel inadequate. You feel unqualified. You feel you don't have what it takes. We're talking about that in the opposite that I do believe you have what it takes to make it in this life. And I've been giving you some reasons as to why that is the case. Today, let us look at one more reason before we can wind up tomorrow. Stay tuned. <music> Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Life Signatures episodes are brought to you by AfricanBooks.com, which is an online ebook platform that seeks to broadcast the African Christian voice to the world. As such, they have become a hub for African content, connecting African writers and publishers with a global reading audience. Publishing your books on their site is free and easy, with authors having full control over their content and the price they choose to sell at it. I was personally blown away by the concept that AfricanBooks.com is coming up with. Things like... No content from their site or their app is going to be run on laptops so that people can easily copy. In other words, your content as a writer is restricted from digital multiplication or digital copying. So you remain intact with your information. And that concept that I got so blown away with was the fact that in some time to come, in due course, AfricanBooks.com will be starting to announce African Writer of the Year. In other words, there will be competitions in all African countries to figure out who is the best published author. And I also fell in love with the fact that countries can actually compete against each other. You can have African authors going at it after each other. And your book as an author will be reviewed and have some stars and recommended upon that particular platform. The thing is that it's an answer to Amazon.com. You know, with Amazon, what happens? You've got to have an account in the Americas or whatever, or in Europe before you can get paid as an author. But here, the local currency is in play and the local means of getting paid are in play. So to get started, go to AfricanBooks.com as an author or as a publisher and even as a reader if you wanted to read your African favorite authors. Enjoy. Let me do this uh, recap, run this uh, through uh, one to six reasons as to why I believe you have what it takes to make it in this life. When you talk about you having what it takes, we're not necessarily talking about you having money in your bank and uh, having a good father somewhere and all those things. They are important, they could be critical, but if those things are not there, 
We are saying that still you have what it takes to make it in this life. Number one, the reason as to why I believe you have what it takes to make it in this life is you are breathing. You are still alive. Otherwise, you don't have what it takes to make it in this life because you are dead. But you're not dead because you're listening to me. Number two, I believe you have what it takes to make it in this life because you are predestined. You did not occur from a molecule or from an atom or from a random whatever it is. You did not evolve from a monkey. There is an intention of the divine around your life and they have got no apologies about it. That's why you have a desire inside of you. That is number three. You have a desire. In fact, you have desires. You have desires to matter. Brendan Buchard said to live, to love, and to matter. You have desires in your life and those could be points that you can be able to use to navigate your life. If you don't have desires, then we can as well bury you. The, re- the fourth reason as to why I believe you have what it takes is because you you have people, a cloud of witnesses, people who have been in worse situations than yourself and they have made it. You can get inspiration from them. Number five, I believe you have what it takes because you are healthy. You are not in a hospital bed, HDU, ICU, ward, whatever. You are healthy. Number six, even if, by the way, before conclude number six, even if you are not healthy, you will be well. There are people who have risen up from virtually the dead in ICUs, in HDUs, in hospital wards. Anyway, number six, I believe you have whatever it takes because you have a seed with you. The seed of potential, gifts and talents, passion. Those ones could be more than enough because you have them. You have what it takes to make it in this life. So number seven today, I want us to dwell on this. The reason as to why I believe you have what it takes is your misfortune (laughs) is an ingredient to your success. Your misfortune is an ingredient to your success. I wrote a book, my very first book ever to be published is called Turn Your Setbacks Into Major Comebacks. You can find it on Amazon. Turn Your Setbacks Into Major Comebacks. In that book, I talk about the life cycle of a crisis. And I say that I've had very many preachers talking about a crisis. They're saying that sometimes you cannot escape a crisis. You're either from one, you're heading to one, or you are within one right now. Basically, it's like our lives revolve around a crisis. And sometimes when you go through a crisis, guess what? You become the most conceited human being ever. The most subjective human being ever because the pain, the crisis, the the setback is real. People who are looking from outside of you cannot feel what you're feeling. They cannot fathom the embarrassment and the shame of being thrown out of your house for the second time. They don't see that. They don't see the embarrassment you have being locked up in hospital. Your wife has just given birth and your kid is in hospital. You cannot get discharged because you've not paid up. They don't see that embarrassment. But yourself, you are embarrassed. You are ashamed. And everything physically around you tells you you don't have what it takes because of what you're going through right now. But we can redirect whatever we're going through right now. Either we can redirect it today or we can redirect it later on. In other words, no crisis should ever be wasted. I'm talking about personal crisis. It should never be wasted. It should never ever be wasted. Most of the biggest revivals I've experienced in my life have always come out of a crisis. And a crisis... With it, we are told by this man called Napoleon Hill, it has seeds of greatness. Every setback comes loaded with it a seed of greater good. The current season you are in is not just a misfortune. The current season you are in, it seems, it is, it seems that it is the biggest misfortune that you are facing. But it is not just a misfortune. If you look and flipped it, you will see that it is also an ingredient. It is also part of a menu for a life of success. It is an ingredient for the success 
that you are looking for. I mean, there are countless people who will tell you, for me, the catalyst was the crisis. There's a woman who formed an organization called MADD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. You know what happened? The child of this woman was killed by a drunk driver. Without that happening, she will never have formed MADD. And MADD is now known world over for that work that they are doing. I'm not saying that you should sacrifice. I'm saying that the crisis, sometimes the crisis we use, we can use it as a seed. We talked about seeds in the past two episodes. We can use it as a seed for greater good. This misfortune is there specifically because it has to be overcome. No setback, no crisis has come to weigh you down, to bury you. It is not your undertaker. It is actually your elevator. The crisis they are facing. And I know it sounds, I warned you, it sounds very inspirational, very motivational. It sounds like, you guy, you're just motivating. You're just having a microphone in your hand and you're just talking. You don't know the pain that I'm going through. I don't know the pain you're going through. It's true. The Bible tells me I cannot understand an individual's pain. Neither can my heart share with their joys. The joys of their hearts. It's different. I cannot fathom. I cannot understand. But I know my pains that I've gone through. Each and every single one of them. At the place where I suffered. That very place has been a place of strength. It has been a place where I've looked carefully and I've risen up like a phoenix. There's a character in the Bible called uh, Samson. Samson one day was going through. It's a strong guy. I mean, a guy who was gifted. His gift was incredible strength. <laughs> Why am I, am, am I laughing? I'm laughing because I had a preacher one day say, Oh, you guys, sometimes you're saying, Oh, the other guys have brains and so on. And then he shouted, Some people were given brains. Others were given good looks. <laughs> My point is, Samson was given big massive biceps okay he was given strength but he wasn't given a brain anyway i'm saying that you have what it takes samson is in whatever he's walking in uh, some place and a lion attacks him he turns up tears the lion into two with his bare hands weeks later maybe months later he passes through, through the same place where he tore the lion into two. And bees had formed a nest, a hive of sorts, and there was honey. Honey from the lion's carcass. And uh, Samson got a proverb out of it. The point is that at the place where he was supposed to die by the lion, that is the place where he got honey. In other words... The crisis that we face, the setbacks that we face, they are there specifically so that we can be able to overcome them. And every time you overcome a crisis, you are stronger, you've got more capacity, you can be able to go again, you've learned something, you never ever waste a crisis. I normally tell people when you come to the place where you feel like you are lost, you feel like you don't know what you're doing in this world. You feel like you're the most biggest imposter this world has ever seen. You are in a very beautiful place. Why? Because that disquiet, that setback, that darkness that you're going through, it is supposed to be sown. It's supposed to give you a season of hope. It is from that that you spring forth. Otherwise, if you are comfortable in your crisis, you're comfortable in your setback, you're comfortable and you just give up on it, there is nothing that is going to come out of it. We are supposed to grow stronger, grow wiser, become more resilient, which we're going to talk about tomorrow. That is exactly what you need to do in order to make it in this life. Believe me, you're supposed to be wiser, stronger, more resilient. And you cannot be wiser, stronger, more resilient without necessarily overcoming something. Overcomers are the ones who normally have something to show that they can be able to make it in this life. And you can do that when you go through a crisis. So your misfortune, 
If you're feeling like you don't have what it takes to make it in this life, you have a misfortune, that misfortune, flip it. Your answer, your breakthrough is in the misfortune. Or it could be because of the misfortune. Or it could be triggered by the misfortune. Or it could be, the misfortune could be a catalyst. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. Believe me, you will gain from this misfortune. So invaluable information, so invaluable insight, so much data. It can never be compared to any university degree out there. That's why I believe you have what it takes to make it in this life. Google in your life and you will see how many people have faced the odds and they have used the very exact odds to propel themselves in life and they have succeeded. Tomorrow we will end this series. Until then, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.